All right. So our, this is almost hot. What we're going to do after this is we're going to actually use our, our grain basket and we're going to get our grain bucket here. And this is kind of where we get to have the fun. So stuff really starts to happen. It starts to smell good. We get a lot of steam. Everything's great. Um, but just what you're going to need. So we're going to need your grain basket. I have the handle still in there. You're also going to need your grain stopper and your upper grain screen. So those things are all on the table right now and your grain bucket. And of course, you're going to need your mash paddle. So we're ready to add our grain now. So we've reached our temperature. So mash temperature reach just means that our water has hit the temperature at which point we need to add our grain. So let's go ahead and add our grain now. So this is actually going to walk us through what to do now. So we're going to insert the assembled grain basket, slowly add the grain and stir well. Then we'll install the top plate, the overflow inlet, and attach the recirculation pipe and press the button set or start mash here on our, on our controller. Let's get to it. So now we're gonna take the lid off, but the lid, so it's been heating the water. It might be a little warm, that's why we give you guys the hot pads. So what I'd like you to do is just put the hot pad on, just in case, and then what I do is I just put my thumb right down the middle of it, and I pick it up, and let the water drain off of it. And then I'm just gonna hang it off the back here on one of the little hooks. Now that that's out of the way. All right. Next we're gonna grab our pre-assembled grain basket. I left the handle in there from last time, but you can, if you don't have it in there, put the handle in now. And remember, when we go to rotate it, we're going to put this down so it slides in nicely. It's going to hit the water, and we're just going to lower it in slowly. And then I'm going to remove the handle, so we don't want the handle in there. Next, what I'm going to grab is I'm going to grab our grain stopper, and I'm going to put the grain stopper inside. I'm going to fully extend the overflow pipe. I'm going to put the grain stopper right inside the overflow pipe. And that's important now before we add the grain. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have my mash paddle nearby. Grab my grain bucket. All right, so I'm adding the grain. We're gonna add it a little bit at a time. Kind of think of it about a third, a third, and a third. So this is our grain. Now we're just gonna start to pour it in, just real nice and slow. all the dust on top of here this is why it's called the grain stopper it keeps any grains from falling down that pipe which could then clog the pump but now we're going to go ahead and take that out 
no longer need that. We'll put that back up on the table. We're going to grab our grain screen here, our top grain screen. Now keep in mind, this has the, the seal as well, but notice all that powder right around the edge. That's actually going to do the same thing that the water did for us previously. So we're going to come in a little bit at an angle here, just get it in, and then make sure that the pipe comes up through the middle, and then we're just going to put this, push this down gently around the edges as we come through here until it just touches the, the grain. So we're going to come all the way down. We don't want to compress the grain bed, but we just want it to be in contact with the grain. So next we're going to grab our recirculation pipe off of our table. And this has a little nub on it. And the little nub is going to press right on that ball bearing in there. And the ball bearing is just an added safety feature to make sure that you don't accidentally shoot hot liquid into your face. Uh, but as a result, we do have to compress that ball bearing when we're trying to spin this on. Otherwise, it's not going to, the threads won't engage and it'll spin all day. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we're going to press, press down on that gently, but just give it enough pressure. Drop that on there and then spin our threads right on. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we just want to make sure that our ball valve is open. So the ball valve, if you think about when it's in line with the pipe, it's open. When it's crossed, it's kind of like putting your hand over it. So it's going to be closed. So we just want to make sure that's open. So when we go to turn on our pump in the next phase, we'll be all set to go. We're going to go back to our app. And in our app, we're going to, we're going to do is we're actually going to um, we'll hit start mash. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn on our pump. And now we're just going to watch and we want to make sure that the liquid comes out at the end here. So sometimes there's a little bit of a vapor lock in there just because it hasn't had any water run through it front first. If it goes for a second or two and it sounds like it might be this case, we just want to turn the pump on off right here for a second. Give it like a, a two count, like a one, two, and then we'll hit it again. And that generally will start the flow, and there we go. So now we've got the liquid coming through here. Okay? So now what's gonna happen is this, this is the mashing process. So the temperature is gonna be held consistent by the heater while the pump is running. And what that's doing is it's a recirculating and infusing it. So this liquid is actually going through the grain bed, and the grains are actually acting in a sense as a filter, so it's gonna clarify that wort. And wort is just unfermented beer. So at this point, the liquid is now becoming wort. We're infusing sugars into, into the liquid. Now, something to keep in mind. So we have it at 65 degrees Celsius. This is gonna be get pretty hot because it's got hot water coming through it. If you need to touch this or, or move it, just please use the handle and make sure you don't burn yourself. But that's gonna do that for about an hour, so we have some time to do some other things. Now would be a good time to go check on uh, your sparge water and just see how that's coming along. By this point, it probably is up to temperature, but it can just sit there. All right, see you in a bit.